Grade 6 Math, number 8.1. This chapter is on probability. We're going to find an experimental probability. An experiment is an activity involving chance, where the results are observed or measured. We've done experiments in science. An outcome is the possible result of the experiment. A sample space is a set of all possible outcomes. Now remember, it's the possible outcomes, all right? An event is a set of outcomes. So an event is the actual outcome, and the sample space is possible outcomes, okay? So remember the difference. The probability of, of an event measures the likelihood that the event will occur. It ranges from zero, it won't occur at all, to one, it will certainly occur. Zero and is none, impossible, and one means it did occur 100% of the chance it's going to, you know, what's going to happen. So the experimental probability of an event is a ratio. It's like a fraction of the number of times that the event occurs over the total number of trials of the experiment. It's the number of times it happened as the numerator and the denominator is how many times that you tried to do the experiment, okay? So let me show you my color wheel here. And if you notice, there's only one pink one and one yellow one. And look at the reds. The reds are these tiny, skinny little pieces in here. But look at the blue. There's a lot of blue, and they're pretty big, aren't they? So what do you think the probability is going to be that it's going to land on the blue? Well, I spun this 20 times. And I tried to spin it the same strength each time. And I was very surprised at the outcome that happened. See? I did this 20 times. And I marked it down, and here's what I got. Here's the event, okay? Here's the number of spaces. There's five large and five small red. There's five large blue, five small red. There's two green, two orange, one pink, one yellow. And I figured I was going to get a lot of blue, and I did. I got seven, because there's five large ones. I only got one red one. I was surprised I got any at all, because they were so small. What surprised me was there's only two green spaces, and I got five of them. On five, five different spins, it landed on green. There's only two orange ones, and it landed on it three times. There's only one pink one. Look at this. And it landed on that pink one four times. Didn't land on the yellow one at all. There's only one yellow. So here's my frequency table. Here's the colors. And that would be what would be next to the P. So when you're doing your, uh, your probabilities, it has a P and then parentheses. That is what goes in the parentheses, whatever is above the frequency, okay? So, here's the frequencies of what had happened, see? It's all the same as these numbers here, the totals. The blue got spun seven times it landed on it. Landed on red once, green five times, orange three times, pink four times, and yellow zero. You can tell how many times I spun the hand around by counting the frequencies. You count all these up, it's going to equal 20. Seven and one is eight. Plus 5 is 13, plus 3 is 16, plus 4 is 20. See? So, there are 16 color spaces that my spinning finger pointed to. It landed on the blue 7 times out of the 20 spins. I multiply the numerator and denominator by 5 to get it to be part of 100, and it becomes 35 over 100, or 35% of the time it landed on the blue. For the P for the red, the probability for the red, it landed on it one time, and I multiplied that by 5 to get 100, and I got 5 over 100, which was 5% of the time. The P green, the probability green, was 5 over 20, which became 25 over 100, or 25% of the time. Probability orange, 3 times out of the 20, or 15%. Probability pink was 4 times out of 20, or 20% 20 of the time, and yellow was 0, 0% 0 of the time. So I was able to put this on a chart right here for probability with 0 is impossible and 1 or 100% is certain. See, 0 to 1. Half would be 50% of a chance that it would happen. And this is where they landed. The blue landed here at 35%. The green landed here at 25%, the pink landed here at 20%, the orange landed at 15, the red at 5, and the yellow at 0. See? 
So your fraction is going to be the P and whatever the event or the number or the thing that you're doing and you put the number of times that it occurred over how many times you tried to make it occur. All right. Like I spun the hand 20 times. All right. So if you rolled dice and you rolled it two times or I'm sorry, you rolled it four times and it landed on its two on the die. One dice is really called a die. Two of them is dice. So if you rolled two of them, a pair of dice, and it landed on a two, and that happened four times, and then you rolled it and it landed on a three three times, and you rolled it and it landed and equaled four three times, here's your frequencies of how many times it landed that way, and here's the number of adding up the little dots on the die, right? like the sum of the numbers of the dots. So it would be written like P and I rolled a two. And this number on the top has nothing to do with the fraction. Okay. The only thing that it has to do with the fraction is that it's the part right here. See the numerator and denominator is the frequency over the total number of the frequencies. This is a four because it happened four times out of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See, four plus three plus three is ten. You total up all the frequencies, see, and that's the number that's the denominator. That's the number that's rolled or the color that was on the wheel or whatever. So the experimental probability is four tenths. See, it's the frequency over the total of all the frequencies. See, it's the number of times the event occurs over the total number of trials of the experiment. That right here, the four tenths is the experimental probability. This is the percentage of times that it happened. See? So now you know what an experimental probability is. You know how to find probability. You also know that when I spin my hand around 20 times, it lands on the pink a lot more than we thought it would, right? And now you should be able to figure out some probabilities on your own. All right? I'll see you next video. Keep up the good work. Keep trying. We're getting through sixth grade math. We're on chapter eight now. See you next video. Bye.